Dad and Kids Play One. Hello, I'm Dad Mashima, and here are all 96 exits uncovered in Super Mario World. Let's get started. Number one, start off by jumping on the sliding Koopa. Go right and be prepared to duck underneath the bonsai bill. Hit a flying item box and grab the mushroom to become Super Mario. Take out any dinosaurs you come across and keep moving forward. Continue to the right and grab the Yoshi coin. There is five Yoshi coins in all, so if you collect them all, you will receive a one up at the end of each level. When you arrive here, use the spin jump to break the yellow blocks, then go down the pipe. In here, grab all the coins, collect the Yoshi coin, then go through the green pipe. Back up top, make sure to go through the halfway goal so if you die, you can restart from that point. Continue forward and be sure to duck underneath the second bonsai bill here. A bit further along, crouch under the third bonsai bill. Now this item box has a fire flower, so get it and let's keep going. Take out more dinosaurs and be ready to jump over this final bonsai bill. Once you reach the end, Grab the last Yoshi coin, then jump over the charging chuck for the gold. Number two. Once inside, jump on the P-switch for the coins to appear. Hurry and grab as many coins as you can before the advantage. After the coins disappear, proceed to the right, then go into the green warp pipe. At the end of this hall is a yellow switch. Jump on it to release the yellow blocks into the world. Number three. First, Run and grab the Ray Cooper shell. Jump to the upper level, then release it to take out a row of troopers. This will give you a one-up. Afterwards, proceed to the right and get a super mushroom from the middle item block if needed. Continue forward to hit the second item block for a Yoshi. Now, use Yoshi tongue to eat the smaller enemies and proceed to do so. This is a cool feature, but keep in mind that Yoshi cannot eat larger foes such as the Charging Chucks, so simply jump over them. Now walk through the halfway mark, then hit the item block in the middle for a 1-up. Be cautious of the Monty modes, and with Yoshi you can actually eat them before they burst out of the walls. From here, you can go up a vine for a Yoshi coin if you like, or ignore it and keep going. Once you make it to the purple warp pipes, you can go down the first one to collect a one-up. Back on top, continue forward then hit the yellow block to jump on the P-switch. Now jump on the brown block to avoid the charging chuck, then go for the gold. Number four, start off by climbing the platforms here. Go to the right and then jump on the swinging platform. Jump to the other side, then get the super mushroom from the item block. Proceed to the yellow blocks, but be careful since they can spread in and out. Continue to the next swinging platform and keep going to the right. Grab a Yoshi at the next item block, then continue forward. When you go to the next swinging platform, stay on it, then hop off and go into the yellow pipe. In here, jump on the P switch, then quickly run across the brown blocks. Grab the Yoshi coin on the way out. Go through the halfway point, then take out the Koopa Troopers. Grab the Fire Flower from here, then jump across the platforms. Jump on these last set of moving yellow blocks until finally you will approach the last pair of swinging platforms. Jump on them successfully to reach your goal. Number five. This is a quick and easy level. Go right and get a super mushroom at the first item block. Now, the second one has a fire flower. Continue to go to the right and try to keep Mario out of the water, especially if he's riding on Yoshi. Once you arrive at the purple warp pipe, proceed to enter it. Now, there's three pokies in here and you can eat them all with Yoshi. Also, the closer you are to them, the faster Yoshi eats. Just be sure not to be too close or else Yoshi will take a hit. Now continue and take the warp pipe out. Back on top, hit the yellow block and get the store and then step on the P-switch. Now run across the brown blocks and use the platforms and try to stay out of the water. At the end of this run, go inside the green warp pipe. And when you make it there, ignore the speaker box and get to the goal. Number six. First, 
Jump on the fence and start climbing to the right. Be mindful of the fence climbing Koopas. Now, you can defeat them by hitting their heads with Mario feet or by punching them if they're on the other side of the fence. There's a fire flower here. You can reach it by dropping on a P-switch, but don't do this. Instead, play the level without touching the floor by climbing the fence. Kill all the Koopas you can with Mario feet. This earns you extra lives after the eighth Koopa kill. Continue and go through the door. Quickly run to the left so the pillars won't crush Mario. When the next pillar comes down, simply crouch under it here. Collect the fire flower from the item box then run to the left to avoid the third pillar. When the final pillar comes down, quickly run to the right then open the boss door. For the boss fight, hit Iggy with two fireballs to make him slide towards you, then jump on his head. When the platform rocks the opposite direction, wait for it to go back the other way then step on his head for the win. Number seven, go to the right then jump on the flying Koopa Troopa. Stay grounded and let the other turtles fly by. Collect the cape feather then proceed forward. There's a charging chuck a few paces in front of you and avoid the baseball he throws. When you get close enough, one shot him with your cape. So there's more flying Koopas and this stage has plenty of them so take caution. Soon, you will approach a volcano lotus? What in the hang is that? Anyways, avoid the fire it sprays and one-shot it with your cape. Now, the first warp pipe takes you to a minigame to collect one-ups, while the second one takes you to an area where you can practice flying. Both of these locations are completely optional. Moving right along, take out the Volcano Lotus while avoiding the Flying Koopas. This item block has a Yoshi if you want, and ignore the two charging chucks. It's not worth it. Eat the Volcano Lotus with Yoshi and take out the Charging Chuck from underneath. Four Flying Koopas will try to ambush you here. Just crouch like this and you'll be fine. Take out the last Volcano Lotus by hitting the item block that one shot the Charging Chuck to reach the goal. Alright, number eight. Play the level the same as before, only this time we have the green blocks activated. Make your way towards the end of the level. When you make it here, run up the green blocks to reach the key, then unlock the exit. Number nine. So this level is an auto scroller, which means you have to play at the game's pace. Take out the buzzy beetle here and keep going towards the right. Make sure not to get crushed at any point in the stage since this will one sharp Mario. Avoid the flying swooper and then take out the buzzy beetle. When you get here, take out the buzzy beetle with a spin jump. There's more swoopers ahead and this item box has a cape feather if needed. Now spin jump this buzzy beetle so its shell won't bounce back and forth. Study the moving walls and take out any swooper that gets in your path. There's a green item box here with a cape feather that has your name on it. Now continue forward and try to stay either in the middle or the right portion of the screen. Now clear this tight area of the buzzy beetles and avoid those pesky swoopers. Once you reach the end, wait for the moving floor to rise fully before jumping on it. Then when it lowers itself, hop on to proceed to the right. From here, glide down with Cape Mario, then keep going right. Take out the spot tops here, then proceed into the warp pipe to reach the goal. Number 10. Now this is going to be the same as before except this time we're going to take a detour about halfway into the level. Alright, so make it to where you see the green warp pipe sticking out of the ceiling. We're going to pass it and turn our attention to the second one. Jump on the rising floor. Then when you're close enough, press up and the jump button to go inside. From here, go to the right. Avoid the charging chuck and you will come to an area that has four yellow blocks in midair. Hit the one furthest to the right to spawn a vine. Either climb it or fly with Yoshi to get the key and unlock the secret exit.
Number 11. All right, so here's the first ghost house of the game. When you start the level, proceed to the right. When you jump over the pits, try not to press the jump button all the way down since there's hundreds of ghosts ready to hit you. Make your way to the end of this area, then go through the door. In this room, continue right up the staircase and go through the door. Now you will be on the bottom level of the same room. Hit the yellow block, then step on the P-switch. Now ignore the arrow made out of coins, then head back to the right and back out the door. Finally, Mario will be back on the bottom level, but this time, hit the yellow block to spawn a vine. Climb it up to the top level. Now head left and go through the door which leads to the goal. Number 12. Before you start, make sure you have Kate Mario. At the start of the level, get some room to run and fly towards the left edge of the screen, then face right to land on the top level. At this point, keep running to the right, and when you reach the end, just drop off the edge into the small room. Hit each of the yellow blocks to receive a one-up for a total of four, then exit through the door to reach the goal. This is how the top secret area is unlocked. Number 13. All right, so I consider this stage to be another athletic style level. Anyways, go to the right and jump on the rotating platforms. Jump off the green item block here. Use your cape to glide and extend your jump. So at the next rotating platform, jump off, eat the blue shell Koopa Trooper with Yoshi. This will give Yoshi wings as long as he has a blue shell in his mouth. Now continue to go right and fly with Yoshi. Make a pit stop, then hold down and press Y to spit the shell out of his mouth. We need to do this every so often so Yoshi doesn't swallow the turtle shell. Now fly until you're about here, then make a pit stop. Eat the shell again to keep going. Keep flying while avoiding enemies and be sure to reach the halfway point. Make another pit stop, then continue. Now fly all the way to the right until you reach this yellow warp pipe. Enter it for a one-up game. Back up top, jump on the platform while avoiding the fuzzy. Now jump on the final platform to reach the goal. Number 14. Start off by going to the right. Be mindful of the Koopas with the yellow shell since they are invincible. Either jump on them or eat them with Yoshi. Once you get here, wait for the warp pipe to lower itself then jump on it. Eat the blue shell with Yoshi and then proceed to fly. Now you can use the pit stop method we talked about in number 13 for extended flight. Just fly over the enemies and then spit out the blue shell to stop Yoshi from swallowing it. Towards the end of the level, parachuting Goombas will start to fall so be careful here. Get the moon icon for a 3 up and keep going. Continue flying to the right and above until you reach the goal. Number 15. First, jump over the thrimps as they hop from left to right and then proceed to the right. Make your way up the staircase and be mindful of the rotating ball and chains. Once at the top, go through the door. Now go left, but there's many thrumps in here, so take caution. Make your way to the end to be greeted by dry bones. If you have the cape power, take it out, then go through the door. This room scrolls vertically, and Mario can die if he get crushed by the moving walls, so be careful. Continue to climb up, and once you make it to the top, take out the dry bones and go through the red door. This boss will walk up the walls and onto the ceiling and try to fall on Mario. Take out Morton by jumping on his head three times for the win. Number 16. First, grab the shell then hop on the P-switch. Kick the shell to the left to make it bounce off the wall so it can hit the Koopas on the lower level. Now quickly run to the right to gain your 1-up. Proceed through the green warp pipe. Reach the end of this hall, then step on the switch to release the green blocks into the world. Number 17. 
Number 17. All right. Swim to the right and be cautious of the Rip Van Fish, which is probably the worst enemy underwater, in my opinion. Continue right while taking out any fish enemies in your path. Make sure you take out the Rip Van Fish or they will chase Mario. When you get here, there's a fire flower in the third item block if you want. If not, keep going. At this point, take out another Rip Van Fish located here and this item block has firepower if needed. Don't worry about the P-switch here and keep swimming to the right. Do the best you can to avoid the abundance of fish enemies here and once you get to the last Rip Van Fish, that means the exit is in sight. Now avoid it or take it out, then proceed to the goal. Number 18. Play the level the same as before, only this time, we need to grab and carry the P-switch to the right. Keep going until you reach this area with brown blocks. Step on the P-switch to turn the blocks into coins, then drop down and grab the key. Swim back up, then use the key on this lock. Number 19. Go to the right and wait for an opening between the booths, then proceed forward. Once you arrive here, step on the P-switch, then use the spring to jump over the large boo. Continue to go right, then go through the door. From here, go left. There's a fire flower in this item block if needed. Continue to the left while avoiding the ghost. At this location, there are some coins that form the shape of a door. Simply collect them all, then continue forward. Once you make it here, grab the P-switch, then move to the right a bit. Now step on it, then run to the right. Keep going right until you see the blue door, then quickly go through it to reach the goal. Number 20. Play this level the same as before, but this time we're going through a different door. At the part with the second P-switch, step on it, then hit the middle item block to spawn a vine. Hurry and climb to the top, then drop on the upper level. Run to the right, then go through the door. Boss fight. To beat the big boo, we need to hit him three times with the purple blocks that Mario is standing on. Be sure not to grab any of the bottom blocks or else you surely will fall. Be mindful of the smaller boos and take him out. Once he's defeated, the first star rule becomes available. Number 21. Okay, go right and take out the green Koopa Trooper. Now you can use the spring here to spawn a vine to climb on to reach the item block for a star. Either way, keep moving forward. Avoid the enemies in your path, especially the spike tops. Now once you make it here, be mindful of your jumps since the pipes are highly slippery. Wait for the piranhas to go back in, then proceed forward. Once you make it to this green warp pipe, go inside. In here, hit the item block and grab the pea balloon to make Mario blow up like a balloon. Keep moving to the right, but hurry since his power is limited. Once you reach the purple water pipe, proceed to hop inside. Back on the ground, hit the Koopa and use the shell for cover against the spike tops. Once you reach the row of Paracoopas, step on the top one to let Mario fall down on each one until you get to the last one. Make sure you're moving Mario to the right so he won't fall. Once this achieved, you can reach the goal. Number 22. So this is pretty much a straightforward shot. Go to the right and avoid the spot tops and the swoopers here. Also, this cave has plenty of buzz beetle, so take caution. Once you make it here, stay on the lower level and take out the buzz beetle with your cape. At the end here, jump up top, then proceed through the yellow blocks. We will return here for the secret exit. As for now, let's keep going. Jump past the paratrooper and continue to the right. Now proceed into the green warp pipe. This item block has a star. 
grab it, then jump onto the yellow platform. Now quickly run to the right as the ground continues to lower into the lava. Clear the buzz beetle here with your star power. When you make it to the end, go into the warp pipe. Now go to the halfway point and be mindful of the buzz beetles and spot types here. This item block has a fire flower if needed. Proceed further once you get near the end and watch out for the charging chuck. Now proceed to the goal. Number 23. All right. So this is the same as before, only this time we're going to play with Yoshi. Now make it back to where the raid blocks are located. If you haven't unlocked the raid switch palace by now, then use Yoshi as an alternative means to make it up there. To do so, jump with Yoshi and at the height of his jump, press B and A together. This will allow Mario to jump off Yoshi and hit the item block. Once the vine appears, repeat the process to reach the vine. Climb up it, then use the key to unlock the secret exit. Upon doing so, we'll unlock Vanilla Secret 1. Number 24. After Mario falls into the water, go to the right and walk past the flopping fish. Hop over the buzz beetle, then jump into the water. We know the routine when it comes to water, which is avoid all enemies as much as possible. Over here, hit a yellow block and spawn a vine, then climb up it. Jump to the right and there's more buzz beetles on the way, so take care. Now remember this section with the brown blocks. We will come back here later. Now go back down into the water and over here, this item block has a cape feather or mushroom if needed. Now once you make it here, you can hit this item block for a fire flower, then use it to reach the above platform. Now continue right and avoid the charging chuck. A little further down is the halfway point and another charging chuck. Avoid him as well. Now you will come to a wall of brown blocks. Step on the P-switch and continue right. Use the brown blocks to keep Mario elevated and do the best you can to avoid the waves of enemies here. Once you get to the end, you will notice this long charging chuck here. By all means run, it's a setup. Two more charging chucks will jump out of the first one. Just avoid him and get to the goal. Number 25, let's get to the secret exit. Okay, so do you remember the brown block section from number 24? Go back there. Now jump down back into the water, then proceed right. We have to make it to the item block with a fire flower. Now jump off of it, but this time go left. Grab the P-switch, continue left until you approach a wall of brown blocks. Step on it, then go left. Then hop over the first gap, but fall down the second one. Glide to the left until Mario is on the platform with the key. Now take the key, drop back into the water, swim to the right and use it on a lock. This will unlock the Ray Switch Palace. Number 26. Here's most ghost hunting fun. From the start, dug under the floating ghost here. Wait for an opening from the rotating ghost, then proceed. Also, the item box has a fire flower if needed. In this section, jump from platform to platform and be mindful of the boo's position. At a yellow blocks location, quickly run past a large boo and stay on the upper level. Now this item block has a feather cape in it, so get it if you don't have one. When it comes to this large boo, Turn and face to the left to lower him at Mario. When he get close enough, hop down and run under him to the right. Here's my rotating booze, so wait for an opening, then proceed. Now go through the door. This room has large green orbs that seek to hurt Mario. Duck, hop, and do what's needed to avoid them at all costs. When you get here, hit the middle yellow block for a P-switch. Now grab it and keep going to the right. When you make it to the end, you'll notice coins that form the shape of a door. Collect all of them, then step on the P-switch to make the blue door appear. Now go through it and make your way to the goal.
Number 27. This area takes place inside a lava cavern. Hop on a raft made of skulls and ride it to the right. Two blogs will be waiting in the lava here. Just simply hop over them. Be careful of the buzz beetles and the piranha plants as you make your way up the pipes. Now jump on the second raft and ride it. At this point, there are three blogs here. Simply jump over them one by one. Now hop off the raft before you fall along with it. Hit the invisible item block and climb the tall pipe. Now continue to the right. Jump on the third raft here and be prepared to jump over another block. When you see these brown blocks, that is your cue to jump off of the raft. Now proceed further and if you have Yoshi, use him to eat the piranha plants as you continue forward. Jump on the fourth raft, then hop on the upper level so you can walk along with it. When you reach the end, hop back on and ride it until it's time to jump on this yellow warp pipe. Actually, you can go down the pipe if you like to, but there's really nothing here but buzz beetles and water. Continue going to the right, then go up the purple warp pipe. Back up top, press and hold the jump button off of the ramps so Yoshi can clear the tall warp pipes. Also, make sure to go through the halfway point. Now jump on the fifth raft and continue going to the right. There are four blocks waiting in this area. Hold your position and jump over all of them. At this location, avoid the spike tops or use Yoshi to eat them. Jump across these platforms and this item block has a cape feather if you need it. A little further is the last raft you have to ride. Hop on it, then jump to the upper level. Make sure you walk along with the raft and keep it in view or else you have to start over. Take out the piranhas with Yoshi if you need to. Now hop back on it and once you get on this lava hill, jump off of it for the gold. Number 28. Okay, for the most part, this stage is really about constant movement. Hey, right, and avoid a bullet bill with constantly shoots at Mario off screen here. Listen to the sound and you can almost tell when the bullet bill will come on screen. Keep moving and try not to stay in one place for too long or you will be struck by the bullet bill. Sometimes you can use the paratroopers to keep yourself elevated. Once you make it to the halfway point, a bullet bill trap will launch, so be careful here. Continue to the right and fly from the halfway point. Do this to avoid another bullet bill trap. Now sustain your flight to avoid a third bullet bill trap. Keep flying now until you reach the goal. Number 29. First, get a Magic Koopa to appear below you. When he casts his spell, it will take out a yellow block. Now drop down and proceed to the right. When you get to this area, you will see a P-switch up top and a door in mid-air surrounded by coins. Make sure you collect the first row of coins only. Now go back and collect the P-switch and take it to solid ground. Step on it and hurry back to the door. Jump on the brown blocks and proceed through the door. Now in this small room, go through the halfway point and go through the door. This area has lava, moving platforms, and dry bones everywhere. Study the platform so you'll know when to jump and when not to. As you move through here, keep an eye on the dry bones since the only way of really killing them is with a cape feather. Now once you make it to the end, go through the red door. Lemmy's boss fight is simple. Three Lemmy's will appear throughout the different warp pipes. Our job is to spot the real one, then jump on him when he appears. Just be mindful of the flying fireball in the room. Hit him three times for the win. Number 30. It's best to start this palace with Yoshi. Jump on the P-Switch, then eat the invincible Koopa Trooper. Now eat the next one, then take out the rest of them with a shell as you move to the right. At the end, Go through the green warp pipe. At the end of this hallway, step on the red switch, which will release the red blocks into the world. Number 31. This is a vertical stage, so we must climb up it. Jump or either fly to the higher platforms. 
Be careful since there are many Koopas here. At this location, go to the right. Now jump to the platform and hit the yellow block to spawn a vine, then climb up it. Soon, you will come across the spring as well as many paratroopers flying above you. If you look at the Koopas, you'll notice a gap between them. Use the spring to launch Mario between the Koopas. For added protection, use the spin jump with the cape while jumping off of the spring. Keep going up and when you get on these green springs, stand to the edge and press the jump button for maximum height. When you reach the top, go through the green warp pipe. Now take out the charging chuck if you like to, then reach the goal. Number 32. So here's how to get to Vanilla Secret 1, Secret Exit. Climb up the platforms like we did in number 31. Now make your way to where all of the flying paratroopers are located. So instead of going up, we're going to go to the left. If you have a feather, this task becomes easier. Now stand here on this edge of this platform. Now run to the left and fly. Mario will take flight then land on this warp pipe to the extreme left. Now go inside the pipe. From here, take out the charging truck to reach the goal. Once this accomplished, the vanilla star rule will become available. Number 33. At the start, make sure to take out the paratroopers and acquire Yoshi as soon as possible. Go to the right and take caution since there are a lot of paratroopers in this part of the stage. Use a shell to hit the green block for a cape feather. Now continue. Do the best you can and try not to let these Koopas get too close since there are many of them. As you proceed further, even more Koopas will come along the way. This item block has a fire flower if you need it. Keep going to the right and when you make it to this area with the piranha plants, you're basically at the halfway point. Now here's where things get a bit interesting. Avoid the spiny, and when you make it here, go ahead and eat like two. Watch out for the fallen bomb arms, and honestly, it's best to avoid them altogether. The third music note has a cake feather for a quick power-up. In this area, you can actually step on the spinies with Yoshi without taking damage. Now hit the second yellow block to spawn a P-switch. Step on it, turn the spinies into silver coins, now collect them all for a two up. When you get to the second lock of two and charging chuck, it's a trap. Two more charging chucks will spawn from the ladder. Just avoid them all together. Now use your cape to flow across the paratroopers and reach the goal. Number 34. The premise of this stage is quite simple. We have to stay out of the water and use the dolphins to help Mario. This item block has a cape feather and a cape power is necessary for this level. Once you make it to the vertical jumping dolphin, a porcu puffer will emerge. This is the main reason why you have to stay out of the water. Now a little further down is the halfway point so make sure you go through it. Keep Mario riding on the dolphins and away from the porcu puffer. <laughs> That's a weird name. At any time you fall off of the dolphins, use the cape to slow your fall and buy some time. Once the dolphins start swimming to the right, it makes the level a bit easier. Stay on top of the dolphins until finally you make it to the green warp pipe. Now enter it and get to the goal. Number 35. Okay, so most of the vanilla fortress is underwater. Start off by going to the right. Be mindful of the ball and chain traps here. Also, there are many fishbones enemies here. Avoid all of them as best you can and continue. Now here's a passageway that only small Mario can get through. So either you can take the upper path or this one, but they both lead to the same place. With that being said, we are taking the upper path. Now keep swimming to the right and once you arrive here, 
Watch out for falling spikes from the top of the ceiling. Take out the bony beetle here and keep going. More ways the enemies will approach as you proceed further. When you get to the end, go down the warp pipe. Now here's the last hallway. Many fish bones are here as well as dry bone. Do the best you can to avoid them all. Keep swimming to the right and when you get this item block, grab the mushroom before opening the red door. The Renzo boss fight is quite simple. There are four dinosaurs on a spinning wheel. It only means of attack is spitting fireballs at Mario. Our job is to hit it from underneath until all the dinos are defeated. Once you defeat the second dino, the floor will start to disappear, so be careful. Number 36. Start off by going to the right. Jump on the top wooden platform and ride it. Focus on the saws that move along the path and jump when necessary. When you reach the end, be sure to go through the halfway point. If you have Yoshi, then hit the item block located here to collect the Yoshi wings. Once you do so, you will be taken to a new location. This area has auto scrolling, but thankfully Yoshi has infinite flight. Be careful of the fuzzies as you fly here. Once you arrive at this arrow made of brown blocks, proceed down to complete the exit. Number 37. Now we will play this level like we did before, only this time we will skip the Yoshi wings at the halfway point. Keep moving to the right, jumping across the platforms until you reach this long stretch of logs. Now stand to the edge, then run and fly from here. As you glide down, try to land on top of the saw with Yoshi feet. If you do this right, you can extend Yoshi's glide. Once we're here, don't go to the goal. Instead, drop down to this lower platform. Now jump and glide to the right. Right before you fall off screen, jump off of Yoshi. RIP Yoshi. And if you do this right, you will be behind the goal. Now continue to the right until you reach the second goal. Now go for it and complete the exit. Upon doing so, we'll unlock Soda Lake. Number 38. So this level has lots of Monty modes, but with that being said, it's really straightforward. Go to the right and take out the Monty mode and the sliding Koopa Trooper. Hit the Sumo Bro from underneath since that's the only way to kill it. Also, this item block up top houses a cape feather. Be careful of these Koopas. As stated before, this level has plenty Monty modes, so we need to take it slow here. Continue to the right and once you jump across these two red blocks, be prepared for a gang of Monty Moles. Take them out and then continue. Ignore the Sumo Bros here and reach the halfway point. Afterwards, there is more Monty Mole Carnage. Take them out as well, then proceed. When you arrive here, the third yellow block has a vine in it for more exploration, but it's really not necessary. Over here, Hit the item block to spawn a Yoshi. As you continue forward, even more Monty Moles will try to ambush you. Take out the Sumo Bros here as fast as you can, then climb the row of item blocks and keep going. Once you are here, use the Charging Chuck's head as a spring as you head for the goal. Number 39. This castle starts off in a tight passage. Navigate this area and be mindful of the rotating ball and chain as well as the bony beetles here. When you get to the end, go through the door. In this room, we have to quickly go to the left as the ceiling is trying to crush Mario. Jump over two pits and when you make it to this button, hit it to turn it off. Now continue to go left and jump over three more pits. When you land from the third jump, keep running to the left before the ceiling can one shot you. When you reach the end, go through the door. Finally, in order to reach the red door, we must climb the fence here. Also, there's an abundance of fence climbing Koopas in here, so be careful. When you reach the top, go through the red door. Look when it's quite easy. Jump on his head as he shoots his fireball. He will then go into his shell and try to ram you. 
Just jump over him, then wait for him to do his somersault. Now jump on his head and repeat this process again to defeat him. Number 40. At the start, go to the right and avoid the fish and the skull boxes as best you can. Now these skull boxes are really the bane here on this level. Whenever you approach them, it's best to move on as fast as you can. Otherwise, they will start to bombard Mario with torpedoes. At this point, eat the fish and continue to the right while avoiding the torpedoes from the skull box. The whole premise of this level is all about movement and consistency. We can't afford to be still for too long or bad things will start to happen. One thing I would like to point out is that the fish here only serves to slow you down. Get past them as fast as you can and keep going. Now at this point, try not to stop or else you will be ensnared in the skull box's trap. Once you proceed further, enter the warp pipe and get to the goal. Once this is achieved, the new star rule will become available. Number 41. Okay, so here's another auto scrolling level. Go to the right, then jump on the green mushrooms to proceed. Now, these mushrooms will continue to fall as long as Mario is standing on them. It's best to play this level with the feather power up. Use the cape to slow down your fall as you jump from mushroom to mushroom. At this point, carefully jump on top of the first Koopa and continue to stay above them. Once you make it to the fourth Yoshi coin, stand on the mushroom to go down, then jump and glide to the right. Make your way up the yellow blocks and then go to the right. Hurry and jump off this platform and be mindful of the row of paratroopers here. Once you make it past them, go down the warp pipe to reach the goal. Number 42. So this level is a bit chaotic, but we got this. Go to the right and be prepared to be attacked by multiple flying Koopas. We have to study the way they move since some fly high and some fly low. Also, keep in mind that all of this level is like this. Proceed to the right and once you make it past the first Yoshi coin, a Koopa will kick its shell at you from above. There's like four Koopas that will kick its shell at Mario, so take caution. Now go through the halfway point and continue. Keep moving and get a feather from this item block if needed. Now the next item block has a Yoshi, so mount him for added protection. Continue forward and do the best you can to avoid the flying Koopas. Once you reach the last Yoshi coin, you made it to the goal. Number 43. At the start, Go to the right and avoid the wiggler here. Take out the Koopa and get the mushroom from the item block if needed. Use the red shell to reach it. Jump over these gaps and take care of the Koopas along the way. This item block has a Yoshi. Now mount and use him to eat the wigglers. When you make it here, hit this yellow block to spawn a 1-up. Now hit the musical note to make the 1-up hop so you can collect it. Continue to eat the Wigglers with Yoshi as you proceed to the right. A little further is the halfway point which is always a must. When you make it to this item box, wait for it to change into a star, then collect it. Now quickly run to the right and try to hit every enemy in sight. Once you make it past the 8000 point score, you will receive a 1 up for every Koopa and a 2 up for every Wiggler defeated. Once you make it to the edge here, jump down and know the item block and keep going to the right. At this point, eat two more wigglers and once you make it a bit further down, we need to defeat the amazing flying hammer bro. Now use this flying platform to reach the goal. Number 44. So play this stage the same, but let's fast forward a bit to the halfway point. At the random item box, collect the star, then make a quick dash to the right, hitting all the enemies as you go. 
Once you make it to the edge, drop down and let's hit the item box for a people who power up. Now go to the left and be sure not to run into this paratrooper or else you will fall. When you arrive here, hover above this platform and wait for your people balloon power to wear off. When it does so, drop down and hit the item box for a key. Now use it on the lock to unlock the secret exit. When you complete this task, the forest ghost house will become available. Number 45. So this level is all about patience and precision. Swim to the right and collect the cape feather. Now take out any fish that get too close with your cape. Keep moving forward and wait for the sea urchin to clear the path, then continue. Wait for the sea urchin to move out the way, then take out the fish. Now swim upwards while avoiding the other sea urchin here. Swim past the purple block while waiting for the sea urchin to clear, and when you get to this point, carefully let Mario sink since there's like two sea urchins rotating around the area. Now keep swimming to the right and eventually, you will have to swim upwards while avoiding the fish. Hit the item block for a fire flower, then continue to the right but stay up top since the bottom path leads to a dead end. Wait for the two sea urchins to clear your path, then make your move. Keep an eye out for the Rip Van Fish here since this guy can sneak up from behind sometimes. Continue to swim to the right while waiting for several sea urchins to clear as you proceed further. Once you make it to the end, let Mario sink and be careful of the Rip Van Fish. Here's the key point. See the item block here? Remember this area since we will be coming back here soon. Now we are almost to the goal, but there's like 10 Rip Van Fish waiting for you. The key here is try to keep Mario at a middle height between the floor and the ceiling. If you swim too high, you're putting Mario in danger of waking the Rip Van Fish. Now swim to the right and reach the goal. Number 46. So let's play this level as we did before, only this time, we're going to make a detour. Remember the item block I told you was a key point in exit 45? Let's do a camera cut there now. Swim to the left of the item block and take out the Rip Van Fish. Now swim through the illusionary wall to grab the key and unlock the secret exit. Once this is done, the Blue Switch Palace will become available. Number 47. Go to the right. If you have Yoshi, eat the bomb on inside the bubble. From here on out, either eat the enemies within the bubbles or just avoid them altogether. When you get to the tall warp pipe, use the spray to jump over it. At the second tall warp pipe, hit the red shell from underneath so it can make the spring fall. Now use it to jump over the warp pipe. Once you encounter a few more enemies, you will reach the halfway point. Now go through it. Continue to move to the right while jumping over pits, and once you make it to the charging chuck, that means you're almost at the end. Beware of the charging chuck since the second one is hiding behind him. This tall green warp pipe is the key point in this stage. Remember this since we will return here. Now jump over the yellow warp pipe and reach the goal. Number 48. All right, so we know the procedure here, so let's cut to the chase. Let's go to the last soil warp pipe in this level. Once you make it here, make sure you have a power up since small Mario cannot break the yellow blocks with his spin jump. Now go down the pipe. Once inside, spin jump the yellow blocks, then get the key and unlock the exit. Once this is achieved, Roy Castle will be available. Number 49. So this castle feels more like a gimmick, but nevertheless, it's still fun. Go to the right and jump on the moving brown blocks. These brown blocks are the key element in this level, and it's the only way to proceed. 
Try your best to position Mario in the middle or towards the back end of the box. This way, it will give you more time to move correctly so you don't fall. Also, be careful of the fireballs that pop out of the lava from time to time as well as the ones that actually fly around. Now when you get to this point, a fireball will most likely bounce back and forth off of the brown blocks. Just stay close to the back end or else you will get hit like so. In the spike area, pay attention to the darkened spikes since those are the ones that will try to fall on Mario. When you make it here, jump off of the brown blocks and hop on a P-switch. Be careful of the spike here. Now run to the right. Avoid the various fireball traps from the lava and the Bowser statues. Finally, grab the cape feather from this item block and make your way past the last two Bowser statues and go through the red door. Roy's boss fight is more like a faster paced version of Morton. He will try to run into you then go up the wall. Once he above you, he would then drop on top of Mario. Jump on his head three times to seal the win. Just keep an eye on the walls since they will be closing in, making this boss fight a bit harder. Number 50. First collect the coins here. Then hop on the silver P switch, which will turn the spinies into silver coins, then a purple one. Now collect all silver coins and gain both a one up and a two up. Now enter the warp pipe. Continue down this hallway and step on the blue switch to release the blue blocks into the world. Number 51. So we start this level in a tight area. Proceed to the right and avoid the ghosts here as best you can. When you get to the second big boo, turn the other way and let him approach you. When he get close enough, quickly run underneath him and proceed to the right. Continue forward and once you get here, do the same thing with these ghosts. Turn the other way, let him get close to you, then hop over them. Keep moving and a bit further down is an item block with a mushroom. Grab it and make a break for the door. In this room, there's an abundance of ghosts here, so try to stay as low as you can. Here's a flying item block with a fire flower, and the second one has a cape feather. Now continue to move to the right and grab the P-switch when you approach it. Make sure to collect the coins, and when you reach the end, hop on the P-switch to reveal a blue door. Now go through it to continue. Now we're back to the starting area, well, on the outside of it, so to speak. Go to the left and be sure to avoid the ghosts here. Once you see the first door, go through it to reach the goal. Number 52. So by now, we should know the drill when it comes to secret exits. Let's play the level the same, but there's a minor change towards the end. So let's do a camera cut there. After you enter the blue door, you will be back to the beginning area. Go to the left and when you see the first door, proceed past it. Keep going to the left until you reach another door. Now enter it, grab the three up, then reach the goal. Upon doing this will make the path to the right of the ghost house appear. Number 53. First, be sure to complete the forest ghost house so you can unlock this level. Go to the right and do the best you can to avoid Lakitu. Now Lakitu will have a 1-up at the end of a fishing pole. If you collect this 1-up, then he will start tossing spinies at you so tread carefully. Once you make it to this purple warp pipe, you will be at the halfway point. Just proceed a bit further. Now continue to the right and remember this warp pipe here. We will return here later. Keep moving to the right and do the best you can to avoid Lakitu and his spinies. Once you make it to these purple blocks, use them to take him out. At this point, watch out for the charging chuck here, then jump over the warp pipes to reach the goal. Number 54. So it's secret exit time. We will play this level the same as before, but this time we will take a detour. 
Let's do a camera cut to the purple warp pipe that I mentioned in Exit 53. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention Mario could ride Lakitu's cloud for a limited time, of course. So take him out, then hop on his cloud and fly over this warp pipe. Now enter it to collect the key and unlock the secret exit. Upon doing so, we'll unlock the forest secret area. Number 55. All right, so this stage is an athletic type level, I believe. Go to the right and jump on the gray blocks with the wings. It should be noted here is the only time that I jump to another flying platform. So these gray blocks will automatically move to the right. Our job here is to keep Mario out of harm's way while flying in this area. This level has an abundance of paracoopers here and they're everywhere. Study their location and do the best you can to stay out of their range. Just keep Mario safe and the flying platforms will take you straight to the goal. Number 56. So here's the last exit in the Forest of Illusion. This is the auto scrolling area. Go to the right and be mindful of the smashing pillows here as well as the rotating buzz saws. Please don't make the mistake of letting down go too early like I did here. Continue to the right and dodge the next saw and pillar. Now there's three more pillars up ahead as well as more buzz saws. Avoid them all and make your way to the door. As soon as you start this room, a buzz saw will try to land on you from top right. Dodge it and continue. Jump over this pit, and when you make it here, carefully time this and jump down and avoid the two buzz saws. Now run up the ramp and proceed. Get the mushroom from this item block, then jump over the next pit. In this area, keep Mario on the stone blocks here while avoiding the lava bubbles while jumping. Jump over the next pit and be ready to jump again since two more saws are hitting your way. Now stay on the middle level here and collect the cape feather from this item block. See the red door? Don't go here. Instead, go up top and continue to the right. We need to fly now, so run and fly with the spin jump. If you do this right, Mario will not get hit by the lava bubbles that fly upwards here. Once you land, collect the one-ups from the yellow block and go through the red door. This Renzo boss fight is the same. Just hit each of the dinosaurs from underneath to defeat it. Number 57. Go to the right and take out the Dino Rhino here. This is a smaller version of the Dino Rhino. These guys generally move fast and can jump on platforms. They can also breathe fire. While the big version of him is built like a tank, he cannot jump. Proceed to the right and hold down to slide and take out the large Dino Rhino. Also, use your cape to take out the smaller Dino Rhinos. Get a fire flower from the Wang item block if needed. Once you make it to the yellow warp pipe, hop inside and you will be launched out of the green warp pipe soon after. Defeat the large Dino Rhino and a bit further to the right is a spring. Jump on it and get to the halfway point. Now continue forward, hop on the speed switch, then take out the charging chuck. Once you make it here, you can slide and take out these Dino Rhinos. Also, there's another fire flower in the item box if needed. At the next item box is a Yoshi, so use him to eat the piranhas here. Now if you would like to make a detour, you will have to go down this warp pipe. Once inside, go to the right. Grab the one up from the yellow block and use the dolphins to play keep away from the porky puffers. There are two of them here, so be careful. Once you make it across the other side, go up the warp pipe. Back up top, you will be launched out of the pipe. Now use your cape to glide your way to the goal. Number 58. So this is probably one of the more frustrating ghost house style levels. 
Go to the right and be prepared to jump over the moving pit. Yes, the pit can move in this level, so take extra caution when trying to clear them. Avoid the two eeries coming from the right. After you clear a few platforms, you will come to a section with a moving pit and five eeries. First, go to the left edge of this platform to give yourself room. Now avoid the eeries and next clear the moving pit. Do the same thing here. Give yourself room from the moving pit, then try to avoid the eeries. In this section, a fishing boot will appear as it tries to touch you with its blue flame. Avoid it at all costs and keep moving to the right. This item block holds a cape feather if it's needed. Now this section is tricky. We need to clear this moving pit, but at the same time, we also have to jump at the correct height so we don't hit the fishing boo's blue flame. Now clear a few more moving pits and when you get to the end, go through the door. Go to the right and you will notice three gray blocks here. Cross over them and they will transform into ghosts. Now we need these ghosts to reach the end of the level so allow them to follow you. Avoid a large row of ghosts that ricochets off the wall as best you can while waiting on the three ghosts you encountered earlier. Try to get the ghosts into this position and face them so they can turn into blocks. Now use them to get to the door and reach the goal. Number 59. Begin this level by eating a small Dino Rhino with Yoshi. Take out the large Dino, then make your way up the platforms by jumping off of the spring. When you get to the top, take out the large Dino Rhino, then proceed to the right. Grab the one up from the item block and jump on the large Dino Rhino. Now drop down and go into the warp pipe. Continue to the right and eat the Rex that approaches you. There are like five in all. Now here's a large pit you need to clear, but to do so, we must make the jump to the spring first. Now use the spring to jump to the other side. At this location, eat the Rex, then jump across the piranha infested warp pipes. Once you get here, eat all the dinos and grab the mushroom from the last item block. Now go through the warp pipe. Finally. Make your way across the water and be sure to grab a bubble with a mushroom in it. When you make it to the end, go through the warp pipe. Now ignore the P-switch and make your way to the goal. Number 60. In order to get to the secret exit, we must hurry through the first part of the level. That means don't even waste time taking out down on rhinos, just ignore them. We need to make it to the second warp pipe with at least 250 seconds left on the clock. Continue to jump on these slanted platforms and use the cape in combination with jumping on these paratroopers to extend your jump. So we have a time of 266 left on the clock, so that means we should be good to go. Now go inside the warp pipe. If all is well, then you should be greeted by three charging chucks. Take them all out. Now grab the key and unlock the exit. Upon doing this, will make the chocolate secret available. Number 61. So here's the chocolate version of the athletic stage. Go to the right, then hop on the rotating platform. Now jump down and take out the Koopa. Jump on the next swinging platform and continue to go to the right. Use your cape to glide and make your jump safer as you move across the rotating platforms. If you have Yoshi, eat the blue shell Koopa to gain wings. Now fly all the way to the warp pipe and use the pit stop technique when necessary. Once inside, hop on the rotating platform to gather coins. Once you're done, go down the warp pipe. Keep going to the right and be careful of the fuzzies here. As stated before, use your cape to extend your jump and glide to near the goal. Now eat the blue shell Koopa and fly to the finish.
Number 62. So we know the drill when it comes to finding the secret exit. This time, we're going to do a camera cut towards the end of the level. So eat the Koopa with the blue shell with Yoshi. Then proceed to fly towards the far right. Do a pit stop to be on the safe side. Now keep flying until you reach the second goal. Number 63. All right, so it's time to find our buddy Reznor again, but before doing so, we must make it through the chocolate fortress. Go to the right and jump through the trap. Make sure you have the correct timing so you don't get hit. Take out the dry bones and jump through the next trap. By now, you should have all the color blocks unlocked. This will make the chocolate fortress a whole lot easier. Keep going to the right, jump carefully here, then take out the dry bones. Now this is the part where fireballs will start coming off of the screen, so take care. Grab the cape feather if needed and keep going. Pay attention to the traps as well as the oncoming fireballs. Take out the third dry bones here, then carefully clear the next trap. Get through these next traps and pay attention to the fireballs. Yes, we are multitasking here. Now here's the halfway point and go through the door. Let the thromp fall, then jump across it. Now there's a series of thromps and thrimps in this hallway. Pay attention to the thrimps movements and don't be hasty when it comes to the thromps. The first item block has a cape feather to add to your arsenal. At this point, pay special attention to the thrimps here and proceed when it's safe to do so. Now make it past several more thromp traps and when you reach the end, go through the brown door. As you can see, we fight our buddy Reznor the same. And if you're fast enough, you can defeat him without jumping on the spinning platform. Once Reznor is defeated, Chocolate Island 4 becomes available. Number 64. So this level takes place in the underground. We start by going to the right. Jump on the moving platform and get to the other side. As for most parts that involve jumping, it's best to use the cape power. Now jump to the Yoshi coin and continue. Keep jumping from the moving platforms and try your best not to be too hasty or you may end up in a bubbling chocolate below. From here, you want to glide down and move to the right while doing so. Now jump to this moving platform, then to this gray one, but you must hurry since this will fall as soon as you step on it. Now continue up the hill and proceed to the right. Glide towards the brown blocks here. Now hit the third block from the top for a P-switch. Hop on it, then go here and down the brown warp pipe. Step on the P-switch here and proceed down. We're not too concerned with the items here. Once you make it to this mushroom, go in the warp pipe. Back outside, hit this item block for a fire flower, then keep going to the right. Now jump over the ball and chocolate pit and spring jump off of the charging chuck to reach the goal. Number 65. This level is pretty straightforward. Go to the right and you will notice some brown blocks with spinies trapped inside. Eat all of the spinies with Yoshi, then grab the P-switch and go here and hop on it. Now gather as many coins as you can. When you finish with that, continue to the right. Use the brown blocks here to get to the other side of this pit. Keep moving along and you don't have to eat the enemies here since they can't reach you anyways. Now go down this yellow warp pipe. So this area has bubbles with fish and mushrooms. Try to avoid the fish here and try not to fall into the water if possible. When you reach the end, hop into the warp pipe. Back up top, 
go through the halfway point, and be prepared to jump on these moving warp pipes. Carefully time your jump here, and you want to jump when the warp pipe is at its highest height. At this point, carefully use these moving yellow blocks to move across the chasm. Once you make it to the charging chucks, there's three of them, take them out and aim for the gold. Number 66. This next castle is a bit of a pain if you're not familiar with its layout. Alright, go to the right and take out the dry bones. Wait and study the time of this pillar. When it's safe to do so, jump on the spring to reach the top, then keep going to the right. Drop down and avoid the spikes here, and crouch under the saw. As you proceed, another saw will come your way. Make sure to jump over it here. Now continue and jump across this pit of lava. Now crouch here and study both saws and the spiky pillar. Once you get the timing down, make a break for it and book it. At this part, pay attention to the three pillars and the rotating saw. Go to the right when you can. Now try to get in this spot. Once the coast is clear, keep going to the right. We need to go up. So make it to the top of the blue block, then crouch. Wait for the saw to pass you, then jump to the right. Now have patience for the second saw, then keep going. Study the movements of the three pillars, then make your move when it's safe to do so. Enter the halfway point, then go through the door. Wait for the little Sparky to clear the path before jumping on this platform. Now jump to the next one and get ready to glide down when this hothead is not in the way. Now move fast here before Mario is crushed, then quickly jump to the next platform while avoiding another little Sparky. Jump to the next platform and avoid a hothead. When the next platform lowers enough, then jump to it. Now keep going and when you reach the dry bones, take him out. Now stand here and wait for the platform to gain height, then jump here. Now get a cape feather if needed and go through the red door. Winnie's boss fight is really the same as Lemmy's, only this time you have two fireballs to deal with. Make sure you pay close attention to the fireballs as you try to attack her. We need to hit her three times to secure the win. Number 67. Okay, so this is the last exit on Chocolate Island. So we're back in the underground. Go to the right, then jump on the spring. Be mindful of this guy here. Eat the buzzy beetles, then fly into the next area. Glide down, then take out this charging chuck. Keep going to the right, then jump through this halfway point. Now proceed into the warp pipe. Now the whole point of this area is to go down. While doing so, make sure to take out those buzzy beetles. Even better, just avoid them all together. Once you're here, make sure you move Mario to the far right as you glide down to avoid the munchers below you. As always, when it comes to jumping or falling, the cape feather is a must. At the end of the fall, go through the warp pipe. Eat the spike tops here and continue. Now this is critical. These yellow platforms will sink at a fast rate as soon as you step on them. So it is important that you jump off of them as soon as possible. Now proceed to the right and once you get to this point, you must hurry here or you will fall into the lava. Rest in peace Yoshi. Let's take out those charging chucks with our cape power and there are six of them in all. Now this part is a setup. I would recommend flying over this pit to make your way to the other side. 
Now go into the final warp pipe and reach the goal. Number 68. From the start, swim to the right and be mindful of the build blasters here. Grab a cape feather from the item block if needed. Now swim down towards the warp pipe and go inside. Swim to the right and watch out for the eerie here. Soon, many ghosts will fill the entire room while appearing and disappearing. Try to position Mario between the ghosts whenever they appear so he won't get hit. This is easier said than done, but there is a small window of invincibility as the ghost reappears, so try to use that to your advantage. At this point, lower the ghost away from the right and swim here. Now wait for an opening from the Boo Buddies, then proceed. Also, be mindful of the Boo that still follows you. Once you make it past the second Boo Buddies, swim into the warp pipe. So here's the final stretch. Make sure to grab the star on the way down the long vertical area. Try to hit as many Koopas as you can to gain extra lives. Once you make it past the third coin section, you're almost at the end. Now avoid the spiky objects, and once you splash into the water, grab the green orb at the center for the gold. Number 69. So we finally made it to the valley, and from the looks of it, it mostly resides underground. Go to the right. Hop over the Mega Mode and take out the Charging Chuck. Now take the upwards path and handle the two Mega Modes here. Grab the Yoshi Coin if you like, then go left, drop down, and head to the right. Take out another Mega Mode here, then keep heading right. Go through the halfway point, then head left and drop down. Now, a Charging Chuck will break these yellow blocks. Let him do so, then take him out. Two more Charging Chucks will attack you. Let them have it, then proceed. Go up one level here and keep heading right. Take out two Mega Moles and continue. At this point, you can drop down if you like, but there's three invisible item blocks here. So in order to reach the top again, we have to go left. Make sure to use the Mega Mole here for a lift. Now walk across the newly revealed brown blocks, then take out the two charging chucks. Drop down at this yellow block and hit it to spawn a vine. If you decide to climb it, then do so to reach a bonus gain. If not, then proceed forward. Take out the Mega Mole and continue to the purple blocks. Annihilate this charging chuck, then enter the warp pipe and head for the goal. Number 70. So this level isn't hard, but I will say you must use patience to beat it. Let's start off by going to the right. Use a yellow platform to reach the higher ones. Also, be mindful of the super here since there are plenty of them. Make sure to use the spin jump on the Koopas so you don't have to worry about their shells. Hit this item block for a cape feather and use it to escape the clutches of this invincible Koopa. Keep moving to the right and a few more enemies down, you will reach the halfway point. Now go through it and proceed into the warp pipe. This item block has Yoshi wings, so if you have Yoshi, you can make a detour here. Now at this part, you must pay attention to the spaces in the walls as the yellow platform moves up and down. If you proceed too hastily or too late, Mario will be one shot from being crushed. This area is really all about paying attention to the shape of the walls and then moving Mario there at the right time so he's not crushed. To be honest, this part of the level is a bit lengthy, but as long as you do what I'm doing here, you will be fine. Once you reach the end, go into the warp pipe. Go to the right and quickly make it through this tight passage. Avoid the Mega Mode, there's two here, and keep moving to the right. Once you make it here, 
wait for the mega mode to drop down first, then proceed. Now make your way up to the top and reach the goal. Number 71. All right, so for this secret exit, let's go to the end of the second section of this level. Hop into the warp pipe. Go to the right and once you reach the end of this tight area, jump here, then jump up top. Now go left until you drop down to where the key is. Now use the key and unlock the secret exit. Upon doing so, we'll unlock the Valley Fortress. Number 72. So here is the final ghost house in the game. At the start, hit the item block for a fire flower if needed. As you go to the right, avoid the big bubbles that approach Mario. There is four big bubbles in all. At the end, go through the door. Make the P-Switch fall and hop on it. Now quickly run to the right and fly. When you make it to the wall, drop down and run to the third door. We need to do this before the P-Switch power fades and the coin turn back to brown blocks. Now go inside the door to reach the goal. Number 73. In my opinion, this secret exit is probably the most cryptic one in the game. So let's do a cut to the second room. Hop on the P switch and fly to the right. Only this time, we're going to run to the last door in this area. When you reach the end, go in the door. Grab the P switch and carry it to the right. Now drop it here in this corner. Hit this item block to make a trail of coins come out of it. Now here's the thing. You have to control the coin trail by pressing the D-pad. The whole point of this is to make a stairway with coins. So once the trail is finished, hop on the P-switch so you can reach the top of the stairs that are now brown blocks. Here are some things to take into consideration. When controlling the coin trail, try to move the coins left for two blocks and then press up for two blocks and keep repeating this until it reaches the top. Purposely allow Boo to hit Mario once you reach the right wall. We need a small Mario to reach the top so he can fit in the small opening. It's possible to fly up there with Kate Mario and even have him fit in the hole, but this is very difficult to achieve. Last but not least, study what is in this video to help you. Now once you reach the top, use the key to unlock the exit. Upon doing this, make Larry Castle available. Number 74. Moving right along, take out the Koopas at the start, then proceed to the right. Now, this is what is called a count lift. These platforms move towards the right when Mario steps on it. The number in the middle represents how long the count lift will keep moving. Once the number reaches zero, the count lift will fall. The count lift only appears in Valley of Bowser 3 level. Now continue to the right and make sure to have Kate Mario since that will make riding the count lift easier. From here, jump to the 1, then to the 4 while avoiding the Paracoopas. Also, use the Koopa as a boost if you must. When you get to this area, go down the warp pipe for a bonus game. When you come back, Use the spring to reach the halfway point and there's a fire flower in this item box. Keep moving along here and glide to the number four count lift. Now here are four count lifts all with the number one in the middle. Just follow along with what I do here and avoid a paracoupa. A bonsai bill will appear so be careful. Now avoid a koopa and the next bonsai bill here. Ride a number four count lift and before it falls, jump over the third bonsai bill. Now ride the last number four count lift and reach the goal. Number 75. Go to the right and watch out for this new version of the charging chuck. 
These guys use their shovels to chuck rock at Mario. They usually throw between three to four rocks, one right after the other, with the minor paw soon afterwards. Use their pausing moments to your advantage and take them out. Now jump over the lava and use the Koopa if you have to. One shot, discharging Chuck, and this item block has a super mushroom in it. Use the pair of Koopas to glide over this pit of lava. Hit this yellow block to spawn a vine. Also, this warp pipe actually leads to another area, but it only takes you further back, so with that being said, let's keep moving. Hit the item block to spawn a Yoshi and mount him to make life a bit easier. Now spin jump the yellow blocks to go down and make sure you glide here so you don't fall in the lava below. Hurry and jump off of these platforms because they sink in the lava at a fast rate. R.I.P. Yoshi. Now continue to the right and avoid both the Koopa and the Charging Chuck then jump through the halfway point. And yet another Charging Chuck is on the move. Take him out and get the Cape Feather from this item block. Keep going to the right and from here, drop down and quickly jump off of the platform. You will come across another charging chuck. Take him out, then proceed. At this point, glide past the Koopa and quickly jump off of the platforms in the lava. Next up, use the spring to gain height, then one shot the charging chuck. Now we know what this means here, so we will be back to unlock the secret exit. Now go right and head for the goal. Number 76. So we know how this goes. Let's get Yoshi and do a camera cut towards the end of the level. Now at this point, use Yoshi to grab the key. Now unlock the secret exit. Upon doing so, we'll make the Valley Sword Road available. Number 77. Here's the last castle of the Koopalins. So we start off by going to the right. Jump on the moving brown blocks and ride it as we did with Roy Castle. Do the best you can to keep Mario safe from the ball and chain traps as well as other hazards. Make sure you follow along with the brown blocks and keep Mario in the proper position. When the blocks move upwards, jump on top of them so you won't fall. Always move along with the blocks even when you're not walking on them. Continue to ride it and use your glide here to avoid the ball and chain and make it back to the brown blocks. Also, crouch at this position. Now when you make it at this point, don't go in this door. Instead, ride the brown blocks down then jump through the halfway point then go through the door. Now this part is all about avoiding the Maggie Koopas and we need the cape power to proceed. Go to the right, then take out the dry bones. The Maggie Koopa will start appearing here. Make your way past the traps while keeping a safe distance from the Maggie Koopa. Take out dry bones number two and use your cape to get through the yellow blocks. Use your cape spin to nullify the Maggie Koopa's magic. Take out the third dry bones and make your way through the second yellow blocks. At this point, make it past the traps from the ceilings while avoiding the fire bubbles from below. Defeat the fourth dry bones and then the fifth one and then go through the red door. Larry boss fight is just like his counterpart Iggy. We have to get him into the lava and to do that, Mario has to jump on his head. Also. Three fire bubbles will emerge from the lava during this boss fight, so be mindful of that. Wait for the platform to lean in one direction, then jump on him. Every time you jump on him, make sure the platform is sinking in the same direction. Now hit Larry three times to seal the win. Number 78. Okay. Without a shadow of a doubt, this is the hardest fortress in the entire game. Quickly move through the first section and get to the green item block and wait. There's like seven schoolers here and if you're caught by one of them, then it's instant death. 
Now continue to the right and glide down. Take out the enemies and move fast from the darkened spikes. There's five skewers in this section. Jump over the spikes while avoiding the skewers. Remember, if a skewer catches you, it's game over. Make it across the lava and grab a super mushroom from the item block. Make sure to avoid the fire bubbles and the bony beetles as well. Now this section is fierce. There are seven skewers here and not only that, we have to avoid the fire bubbles as we jump over the pit. Make your way past the last two skewers and go through the red door. Here is the final fight with Red Snore. Just like before, attack it from underneath for a swift and final defeat. Bowser Castle. So this is the only level in the game that really has no exits beside Yoshi's house. Let's start by going to door number two. Climb the fence and to be honest, the only real danger here are the fire bubbles. You don't have to worry about the climbing Koopa. Ignore them and go through the door. Now let's proceed to door number seven. There's eight Bowser statues in this room. The stationary ones spit out fire while the mobile ones jump at Mario. There are three mobile statues. Make your way to the right and avoid the fire from the stationary Bowsers and avoid the jumping Bowsers altogether. When you reach the end, go through the door. There's eight doors in Bowser Castle, so no matter which route you take, they all lead back to this area. Go to the right and hit the red item block to turn on the disco light. Now try to stay in the light as you proceed further. This little guy is called the Ninji and this is the only area of the game he appears in. Take him out with the cape and continue. Next up we have the Mega Koopa which only appears here in the Bowser fight. Step on them to disable it. Now take out a couple more ninjis and Mega Koopas until finally you will make it to the raid door. The Bowser fight isn't hard, you just have to know his attack patterns. So phase one is him flying from side to side. Then he will stop and throw out two Mecha Koopas. Our job is to jump on the Mecha Koopas to disable it and then toss it upward so it can hit Bowser. After you hit him twice, he will then fly away and attack you with fire from off screen. Dodge the fire, then grab the mushroom from Peach to start phase two. In phase two, Bowser will hover again, moving left and right, and eventually he will dump a metal ball on Mario. Simply spin jump off of it to avoid damage. He will do this twice before throwing two Mecha Koopas at you. Now jump on them and throw the Mecha Koopas back his way. Two hits will get you to the third phase. In phase three, Bowser will try to stomp Mario with his clown card. Every time he pounces, just run under him in the opposite direction. Keep doing this until he throws out two Mecha Koopas. Now hit him twice more for the win. What is Star Road? So Star Road is basically a shortcut between each of the lands in Super Mario World. The Star Road actually starts in Donut Plains and ends in the Valley of Bowser. Each Star Road location is found by unlocking secret exits in the main game and each star you see here represents a world or a land in Super Mario World. For an example, the star in the bottom left corner of the screen is the Donut Plains star. So if I travel there, Mario will be teleported back to the Donut Plains area of the main game. If I go to the star in the upper left corner, Mario will be taken to the Vanilla Dome's area. Now in order for us to beat this world, we must first beat every level including its secret exit in which case, we'll unlock pathways to travel on. Once all exits are completed, both normal and secret, we will unlock the final star which will be on top of the hill in the center. 
This star teleports Mario to the special zone, which has the hardest levels in the game. Now next up is number 79, Star World 1, and number 80, Star World 1, Secret Exit. So be sure to tune in. With that being said, I'm Dad Mishima. See you next game. Number 79. All right, so we finally made it. The whole point of this level is to go down. Then you know that if you spin jump with Mario, then jump back on with Yoshi while spin jumping, you can break the yellow blocks with Yoshi. Continue to go down and grab the skate feather if needed. Also, make sure you're on the left side of this level. Once you make it here, make sure to grab the stars on the way down. Now hit every Koopa you can with the star power. Now consider this the halfway point, even though this level actually doesn't have one. At this point, here's a red Yoshi egg. Now if you go to it, the egg will hatch a red baby Yoshi. In order to transform it, we need to feed it five enemies or five active blocks. Once it becomes an adult Yoshi, we can then ride him as usual. We will talk about the different colors and powers of each Yoshi, but let's save that for another video. Once we reach the bottom here, go to the right and into the warp pipe. Now head for the goal. Number 80. So this is how to get the secret exit in Star World 1. From the very beginning of the level, drop down and go to the right, then spin jump down. When you make it to the second set of yellow blocks, place Mario into this position and then spin jump down. Once you break through, grab the key and unlock the secret exit. That's it. Number 81. So this should be the last underwater level in this game. Go to the right and grab the star. Also, there's a blue Yoshi egg here. Take out as many of the fish here with your star power. Once you make it to this point, be mindful of the Rip Van fish. Eat them one by one with Yoshi. Now continue to the right since this level is pretty much a straight shot from here. Avoid the fish as always as you progress through the level. Once you make it to the second batch of Rip Van Fish, that means this level is almost at its end. Take them all out and continue into the warp pipe to reach the goal. Number 82. To make it to this level's secret exit is quite simple. Let's do a camera cut to the end of the level. Now instead of going into the warp pipe, we will go under it here to the right. Now when you reach the end, grab the key and unlock the exit. Upon doing so, we'll unlock the next saw roll path. Number 83. So this level is extremely short. Just run to the right and Boom, you're done. That's it. I wish there was more to say, but I have nothing else. Oh uh, yeah, sorry about that. Number 84. So this time we need to go up. But before doing so, I'd like to mention that there's a yellow Yoshi egg here. Now either take out the Lakitu and take his cloud to ride it, or simply fly with Mario. Once we make it to the top, hit the item block for the key, then unlock the exit. Upon doing so, we'll unlock a new path to travel on the star road. Number 85. So we're gonna use Yoshi and the pit stop method to get through the stage. Go to the right and I would like to point out there is a red Yoshi egg here. Now jump to the rotating platform. Take out the red Koopas here, then go to the area with the blue shell Koopas. Eat one and now we're going to fly the rest of the way. It is as I stated before, 
fly with Yoshi, but find a place to land and spit out the blue shell. We do this so Yoshi doesn't swallow the shell and we can't continue flying. Now, if we use this method, we don't have to worry about the platforms, just make sure Yoshi doesn't swallow the shell. As you fly, make sure to avoid the paracoopers along the way since one hit can be fatal. At this point, be careful of the Royal Koopas here and try to fly underneath them. Keep flying to the right and you will soon notice a few multicolored warp pipes. Now take a mental note of this area since we will return here. Continue to fly the rest of the way until eventually you will reach the goal. Number 86. Okay, so in order to unlock the secret exit for the level, we need to make our way back to the area with the multicolored warp pipes. Fly in from the left, but at a lower height. Now land on the green blocks and continue to the right. Hit the item block with the shell to reveal key, then unlock the secret exit. Upon doing so, we'll open a new path on the star road. Number 87. So this level is not hard, but with the cape, we can certainly make it easier. Take out the Koopa first, then fly from here. You can actually run on this platform before it falls. Keep up with Mario's altitude, and if you do it well, you should be flying into the green blocks right about... Now. Now continue to the right and take out the piranha plants and the spinies along the way. Now jump on the yellow warp pipe, then jump across to the purple one. Once you make it here, you have to hurry along these gray platforms before they fall. At this point, use the Ray Cooper shell to take out the spinies, then make your way over to the warp pipes and hey for the gold. Number 88. We're going to start the level by flying as we did before, only this time, go as high as you possibly can. If you do this right, Mario will fly and end on top of the yellow blocks. From here, go to the right. Now slide under the storm block and do the same thing for this section. Keep going to the right until you approach the key. Now unlock the exit. Upon doing so, we'll grant you access to the special zone star. Number 89. Here is the first area of the special zone. Let's start by making our way upwards. Jump off the green spranky platforms to hit the second yellow block to spawn a vine. Climb it, then go to the right. Hit the yellow blocks to spawn another vine. Climb it as well, then jump off of the medallic blocks so we can proceed further. Go right, then jump or glide down here. When you reach the bottom, go through the warp pipe. Out here, step on all three P-switches, then hurry to the right and take out the amazing flying hammer bro. Now hijack his flying apparatus to reach the top. Once you make it there, avoid a lack of two and reach the goal. Number 90. This level, without a shadow of a doubt, is the hardest level in Super Mario World. Well, in my humble opinion anyways. At the very beginning, simply jump off the two charging chucks and head to the right. Now hop on the P-Switch, then jump off the spring and grab the P-Balloon power. Now make sure you glide into the P-Balloon. Otherwise, you run the risk of dropping too low and being hit by a baseball toss from a charging chuck. Keep Mario at a high position and hit the item block for another P-Balloon, but don't get it just yet. Now follow it, but don't let it drift too far. When you pass the Volcano Lotus, grab the P-Balloon, but make sure you take out the Volcano Lotus on top as you achieve this. Now keep moving to the right. When you arrive at this point, pay close attention to the position of the two charging chucks. Bait the first charging chuck by hitting his head like so. Now hit the item block for another P-Switch recharge. 
Now keep moving to the right, and as you do, keep an eye on both the Charging Chuck's football and the Volcano Lotus projectiles. Proceed to pass the final Volcano Lotus and head for the goal. Number 91. From the start, hop on the platform and hit the switch to the off position. Be mindful of the fuzzies since this level is flooded with them. Now hit the next switch to the on setting. Let's continue to ride. When the third switch comes up, leave it to the on position. When you encounter two fuzzies, just hop off of one of them with Yoshi. Now jump over the saw and hit the next switch to the off setting. At the end of this ride, simply glide down to land. Hit the item block for the Yoshi wings. Grab them and let's take a detour. Now consider this area a bonus game. Fly and collect the coins. When you make it to the end, just fall down to complete the level. Number 92. So this stage is pretty hectic to be honest. We have to be mindful of the slippery ice surface as well as the countless hordes of enemies here. Go to the right and eat the yellow Koopa. Now, try to keep Yoshi and Mario above the chaos that is this level. Look out for the shell kicking Koopas here since this level has a few of them. Use the pit stop technique whenever you can. A little over halfway into the level, the cheap sheep will start to attack Mario from off screen. Continue to fly above them with Blue Yoshi. Awesome has four bonsai bills, so take caution. Once you see the fourth bonsai bill pass, that means we're near the end of the level. Use the Paracoupa for added height. Now make it to the blue block, then head for the goal. Number 93. From the start, head to the right. Take out the red Koopa, then kick his shell into the item block. Now grab Yoshi and continue. When you pass the four walking Koopas, be sure to eat the blue one. Now let's fly. We want to keep Yoshi and Mario in the air and as always, make sure Yoshi doesn't swallow the shell. As you fly to the right, be sure to be mindful of the Volcano Lotus and its projectiles. There's an abundance of Pokey here, but they're really not much of a threat since we're taken to the skies. Your main concern should be the Volcano Lotus and its placement as you progress to the right. When you see the Charging Chug, that means you're close to the end. Now just fly over two more of them and head for the goal. Number 94. This level isn't tough, it just requires a bit of patience. First of all, the water level constantly changes as well as having a strong current that flows to the left. In order to progress, keep Mario out of the water as much as you can. Eat the cheat cheap and take out the amazing flying hammer bro, then use his flying apparatus to continue. As you go to the right, you will come across a second amazing flying hammer bro. Take him out and remember to keep Yoshi on his level since he can stand on munchers without taking damage. Remember as you proceed, keep Mario out of the water since the current is going in the opposite direction. At this point, run on the item blocks and fly over the third hammer bro and reach the end of the level. Now go inside the warp pipe and head for the goal. Number 95. This level just might be the most chaotic of them all since it's played with both enemies and build blasters. The build blasters alone make this level almost unbearable. From the start, run to the right and fly. When you land, try to land on top of a build blaster and avoid the fire snakes in this area. 
Continue to the right and try not to be still for too long or you will be bombarded with bullets. At the tall warp pipe, we will abandon Yoshi then jump over it. Now avoid the Wigglers and the fine Hammer Bro. Now run to the right and fly past the Hammer Bro. Once in the air, stay there until we reach the goal. Now this technique works great only if you're trying not to acquire the five dragon coins. Number 96. Alright guys, this is it. Here's the final exit. Go to the right and avoid the sumo bro. This level has plenty of them and don't give them the time of day if it isn't necessary. Continue to the right and when you make it to the blue shell Koopas, eat one of them with Yoshi. From here we will take to the skies. Remember as you progress through the level, do the pit stop whenever you can. Avoid the two charging chucks at this area and make sure to fly over their baseballs. At this location, fly over the sumo bro to continue. Once you make it to this warp pipe, we have to take out this charging chuck to proceed. Around this time, super Koopas will start to fly your way so proceed carefully. Make sure to fly over this section that is basically a death trap. By now, we should be down to our last 100 seconds on the timer. Make it past the last three charging chucks and you will notice coins suspended in mid-air that spells you are a super player. Now once you reach the goal, that means you have cleared all the exits in Super Mario World. To ensure that all exits are cleared, go back to the main menu and look at the save game. It should have 96 exits with a star in front of it. If you see this, then congratulations, all exits are done. Before I sign off, I'd like to thank everyone on both TikTok and YouTube for giving my videos a time of day. The next upload will be that of the complete Super Mario World 96 Exits uncovered, but in order to see it, you have to visit our YouTube channel. Well, enjoy the credits to the Super Punch-Out End theme because I like that better than the Mario one. This is Dad Mishima, see you next game.